Hello everybody. Taking a look today at 3030 Death War Redux for the PC. Is it possible that I had to look up how to correctly say the word Redux because I thought it was Ridu? Yeah, it's possible. Anyways, 3030 Death War is an open world space exploration game where you play as John Falcon, a freelance pilot. Normally I'm very wary of games that try to blend genres because what you end up with is a game that's only okay at each each genre but not great at both because it gets watered down. This game however masterfully combines both formats into an addicting and charming game. The game begins with John Falcon being in trouble with the space police. The ship he was piloting was actually stolen and is being impounded. John is given a small amount of money by the police apparently stolen spaceships or something that happens a lot so they have a, a fun setup for it. At this point, the game opens up from here, and let me pause by saying how much I appreciate the game opening up within the first couple minutes of it. You don't get bogged down behind a story that you have to sit through or behind cutscenes. It's an open world game. You get in it, you play it for a few minutes, and, and boom, they, they let you out and they let you go have fun in the world. How John proceeds from the beginning of the game is just completely up to where you want to go next. The player can start by taking jobs to buy a better spaceship, or start tracking down the person who sold him the stolen ship to begin with, or just exploring the solar system. Go for it, play the game however seems best because there is no wrong way to play this game. Let's talk about the, the entire galaxy before explaining what our options are and how to proceed with the game. Each solar system in the galaxy contains a mix of planets, space stations, asteroid belts, salvage locations, and more. And each solar system doesn't necessarily have to have one of everything. It can have more than one of everything, or maybe it doesn't have any. There's definitely solar systems out there that don't have a, a space station at all. Traveling between places in a solar system is fast, and it doesn't use any fuel, which your ship can only hold so much fuel. If you've already been to a solar system then you can view all the different locations that are in the solar system on the map so you don't have to fly around blindly trying to find where the space stations are they show up the game begins with a mix of solar systems that they show up as already explored and then there are also solar systems that are far out there that until you actually fly into the solar system you don't know what's in it you don't know what planets are there or space stations are there going back to fuel Fuel is uh, something your, your spaceship can only hold so much of. Some s ships can hold more fuel than others, and all ships have the option of converting hydrogen in your cargo bay, which you can buy, into additional fuel. Different ships have different cargo sizes, so some ships are much better for going out and exploring the galaxy. There's no shortage of solar systems to explore, and there's no shortage of space stations that you can buy more fuel from. So. It, you don't ever have the frustrating situation where you've gone out too far, like maybe three or four minutes, and then you're not paying attention, you run out of fuel, and then you've got to just slowly inch your way back to a space station. The, the game really puts a lot of safeguards in place to keep that from happening. There are just so many solar systems. I'm nine hours into the game, and I still haven't explored them all. Once you're ready to leave your current solar system, you can pull up the map and start heading in the direction of wherever you want to go to next by engaging your split drive, which is like warp drive in Star Trek terms. Your split drive is limited in how fast it can go when you're inside a solar system. As you start to reach the edge of the solar system, you start going faster and faster, and then once you're outside of the solar system, you hit max speed. This is a really nice feature because if you were able to just hit max warp speed anywhere inside a solar system, you would go so fast you would completely fly past anywhere you were trying to stop so this is a nice quality of life feature you have to beware if you're blindly headed towards another solar system as you can end up caught in a nebula the nebula slows your ship down immensely it makes you burn through your fuel a lot faster and it slowly damages your ship the best course of action is to avoid the nebulas which means a straight line isn't always the fastest way to your next trip as you explore the galaxy, it will automatically map any nebulas you run into for future reference. You can also find map pieces that will help, that will help fill out the nebula location so that you can get to your next location even faster. Before advancing the story and tracking down the man who sold you the stolen ship, maybe you want to set aside some money so that you can buy an even better ship than the one that was given to you by the police. There are a variety of ways to earn money. There's a job board at each station that you can visit, and it has a variety of assignments. 
some of the assignments are taxing people from one solar system to another. You can accept a contract to take out space pirates who are plaguing the system. You can pick up a cargo job, which is using your tractor beam to take goods from one system to another. Some jobs are gatekept at the beginning of the game as they need ship add-ons you don't have yet, but the progression is very natural and I never felt like better parts of the game were being kept from me. Every system has space debris that you can go blast away for instant money. If you don't want to use the job board, then you can go out to an asteroid field and start mining materials that you can take back to a space station and sell. There are abandoned space stations that you can explore and they contain all sorts of loot that instantly go back to your cargo ship. Exploring the space stations is especially fun as the game switches to a side-scrolling view with John in a space suit and a glowing light that follows you and helps show you where the items are. Maybe you'll get lucky and there'll be a death ball game going on in the solar system. The closer you get to the death ball while fending off attacking ships, the more money you'll earn, but there's no telling when the death ball will appear or disappear. Perhaps you're more of the hands-off type and you'd rather make money on, good, on the goods market. Every space station sells a variety of goods, and the cost of the good varies by the station. The game even tells you what the space station is paying more or less for, so you may go pick up, we'll say, silver, and, and load up your ship and go to another solar system, and they're paying, you know, five gold more, and you've got a, a cargo ship of 150, so that's how you make your money. Once you've got some money, you can go buy a new spaceship from a space station. Ships vary from station to station, so it might be worth exploring around to find the exact ship you want. You can go out and buy a fighter ship that has the capability of holding more missiles, more lasers and turrets than some of the other ships, with the trade-off being you won't have as much cabin space to taxi people around or cargo room for storing goods. On the flip side of that coin, there's the option of buying massive cargo ships, which are really great for mining and for storing all the goods you find in the abandoned space stations. You can only own one ship at a time, but this is where Death Rally 3030 really nails the open world aspect, do what you want kind of gameplay. Any upgrades you've purchased are kept forever, even if you sell your ship and buy a new one. I love this fact because you're not penalized for swapping ships around. The game also gives you a handy comparison when looking at new ships, so that you know if the ship you're looking at is faster, has more cargo room, more turning power, things like that. The music in this game is an incredible eclectic mix. Whenever you dock or leave a space station, the game picks a random track to play. There's moody space music like you would expect to hear on a space documentary, and then the next track that plays may be a pop 80s style track complete with vocals. Some of the tracks are true licensed music that you download from iTunes. I, I guess iTunes is what people download music with, I don't really know. Is that how you kids download your music now? Anyway, there's an option to turn off the licensed music, a la a YouTube safe option, so that your videos don't get copyright strikes. I personally enjoy all the tracks, but it's a bold selection of tracks, and I can see how some people may not enjoy the music, but luckily there is the option that if a track queues up and you don't like it, you can just go into options and play the next one. The devil is in the details, and this game does not skip on the details. You can talk to everyone, there's dialogue for bar patrons, random spaceships that you can hail, they'll all talk with you. You can kick the droids in the bar, you can view the personal profiles on people. There's fun details in the space stations like a, a floating noodle station. This game just, it has everything, so please, please consider picking up this game if you enjoy open world space games. It's a crime this game isn't more widely known, and it is, without a doubt, in my top five games played this year.